Wait a minute. Where's Betty? I gotta look right here. Betty, let me see. Oh, let, let, let me touch your hair a little bit. Wait a minute. What's happening? Oh my goodness gracious, I don't know. I can't figure it out. But I think your screen and my screen are talking to each other. What do you think? This is unbelievable. What a world we live in today. Well, I think, Betty, you're at home today. Is that what the story is? Yeah. Where are you right now? Are you at your house? I'm not at my house. You were at your house, and you're not in my house, and I'm not in your house. But you know what's so good is we can still do this. Yay. Now, I've got to have some people thinking about something, Betty. Because this happens to be chapter 25. How many chapters are in this book that we've been reading? Do you know? Yep, 25. So this is the last chapter of this book. And at the end of this story, I have a big surprise for everybody, including you. Yes, I do. So let's get started. This one's called The Disobedience of Saul. Now, you might remember what the problem was. And that was that Israel said they wanted to have a king. So they wound up having a king, and his name was Saul. But that doesn't mean that he was perfect, right? Well, here we go. Chapter 25, the disobedience of Saul. Betty, you probably don't know what the word disobedient means because you're never disobedient. So I might have to explain it to you. That's when somebody doesn't listen to something like their mom and dad are saying, and you always listen to your mom and dad, right? Yeah, I know. And you always listen to Nana and Papa because I can say that that is the truth. So... Not everybody is obedient like you are. And one of them, King Saul. So, the Amalekites were the most ancient and bitter enemies of the Israelites. They were powerful, cruel people who lived to the south of the Holy Land. One day Samuel came to Saul and said, The Lord wants you to go and destroy the Amalekites. Man, woman, child, horse, cow, dog, cat. I don't know. I better not say this one out loud, but maybe even bird. Sorry, Jill. You can hear her in the background. So Saul gathered together an army of over 200,000 men for the biggest undertaking of his brief career as a king. He attacked the Amalekites and defeated them utterly. But he said, saved back their king, Agag, and a lot of fine livestock. You know what livestock is? Well, what do you have in your backyard? I think you have a trampoline, right? Yeah, and we have, um, and we have, um, and we have a, uh, basketball, well, what would happen if you looked in the backyard and you saw that you had cows and goats and sheep and oxen? I would probably scream. Yeah, probably. But that's the kind of things that they had that they're talking about in today's story. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel and said, I'm sorry I ever chose Saul to be the king. That cotton picker can't do anything right. I told him to destroy the Amalekites and all their belongings, and what does he do but save back the king and herds of cattle and sheep? Samuel was pretty upset when he heard that, and he went out to meet Saul as he was returning from the wars. Saul saw him coming and put on a big smile. Let's have a big smile for everybody, Betty. Because he was pretty full of himself with his big victory, and he said to Samuel, I did just what the Lord commanded, and he waited for Samuel to congratulate him on his victory. Yay, Saul! Instead, 
Samuel said, What is all that bleeding and bellowing I hear? Sounds like a lot of sheep and cattle to me. Saul immediately saw that Samuel was on what he had done, and he quickly made up an excuse saying, Ah, uh, well, we saved the livestock to offer as a sacrifice to the Lord. Samuel said, To obey is better than to offer sacrifice. And he told him that because he had rejected God. God had rejected him, and he turned it to go. As Samuel was departing, Saul made grab for him, got hold of his shirt tail, and tore it. Samuel turned around towards Saul and said, Okay, big shot, you ripped my shirt off. God will take the kingdom away from you just for that. Samuel ordered them to bring the wicked Amalekite king Agog to him. And said to Agog, you've spent your life killing people with the sword. Now you're going to see how it feels. And he took a sword and hacked Agog into pieces. Whoops. What? Whoops. Yeah. Wait, a what? Yeah, took a sword. Yeah. And cut up. Wait, what, what did he do? Well, he cut him into pieces. Wait, who? A gog was cut into pieces. A gog? Yeah, that's gog. A gog. Turning to Saul, he said, that's what you should have done. After that, Samuel wouldn't have anything to do with Saul. God then came to Samuel and told him that he had chosen another man to be king, one of the sons of Jesse, who lived in Bethlehem. He said to Samuel, go and anoint this fellow king. I'll show you who it is to be when you get there. Samuel replied to God, now, 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 now wait a minute, God. Uh, that's treason. If Saul hears about it, he'll have my head cut off for sure. God said, he won't even hear about it. Go to Bethlehem and make an appointment with somebody and make a sacrifice, because that's a religious thing, and invite Jesse and his sons to come to the sacrifice. Now do as I say. So, Yep, Samuel went to Bethlehem. You know at Bethlehem? Have you ever heard of Bethlehem before? Have you ever heard anybody who's a little town of Bethlehem? Yeah, where Jesus was born. So Samuel went to Bethlehem, and he got ready for a big liturgy, like a big mass like we would do today. And he invited Jesse and all his sons to the festivity. One by one, Samuel looked over seven of Jesse's sons. And they were a good-looking bunch of boys. And each time he'd see one, he'd say, surely this is the one that God has chosen. And each time the Lord would say, nah, don't think so. Finally, Samuel called Jesse and took him aside and said, I think we've got a problem here. Is that all the boys you have? Well, Jesse answered, well, almost. Uh, the youngest one is out looking after my sheep, but surely you wouldn't want to have him. Samuel said, well, send for him at once. We shall not sit down to supper until he gets here. And he said to himself, bet you my hat, that's the one God's chosen, it's got to be. When David came, Samuel saw that he was a handsome red-haired boy. And God said to Samuel, that's the one, anoint him. Whoops, not what they expected, and Samuel did, and the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. It departed, it left, because he'd been so disobedient, and it rested upon the shepherd boy named David from that time on. And I've got to tell you, we're going to be talking a lot about David in the next few weeks. Saul went from bad to worse. He started to brood and to have temper tantrums. Now, i got to ask you something, Betty. Since you're in school and since you're around a lot of kids, 
Do you ever have any of your classmates have a temper tantrum? Do you know what a temper tantrum is? Like they really get all worked up. You know anybody who ever has a big temper tantrum? Uh-oh, looks like you're thinking about this. What are you thinking about? All right, I'm not going to say. But people began to say... I don't want anybody out there to hear this. But, but what Betty is saying is that sometimes her big sister has a temper tantrum. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Okay. That's a secret. That's a secret. Only the 500 people watching this are ever going to know that. So don't worry about it. So what happens here is, begins to brood and his temper tantrum, people begin to say, what is wrong with that man? Is he crazy? Somebody suggested that what Saul needed was his own personal musician to play some soothing music for him. Because sometimes when people have that kind of trouble, they just like to have some soothing music to calm them down. Maybe that's what Saul needed. Well, sir, what we know about David, he was also a musician and a good singer. So Saul sent for David to come and visit him. David would play and sing for Saul when Saul was in one of his bad moods, and he'd feel better. And he, and he liked David. So he made him his armor bearer and a squire, which means he got a promotion right away. And he got to carry the important armor that had to be put on before they went to battle. Now, about that time, there was war with the Philistines again. And the two armies were camped on the hills on the opposite sides of a long valley watching each other, neither side wanting to start anything. There was a soldier in the Philistine army who was nine feet, two inches tall, a man named Goliath. Can you say that? Goliath. Now, that man would have been a center on a basketball team. So this little fellow came up to the Jewish army, and he proposed that they settle their squabble with single fight. One fight. He said, I'll represent the Philistines, and you choose a man to represent the Jews, and we'll fight him. And if I win, you Jews are going to become the servants of the Philistines. But if your champion wins, we Philistines will be servants to the Jews. So what do you think about that? Well, sir, the Jews were in a panic, because nobody wanted to fight against a nine-foot-tall soldier. I don't know, Betty, would you? Yeah. No. So, when this war started... David had returned home to be with his father. We remember his father's name was Jesse. And three of his brothers were in Saul's army. Jesse had sent David to visit the army with food and presents for his three sons and their captain. And David got there about the time Goliath was delivering his challenge. They told David, King Saul will give great riches and the hand of his daughter in marriage to whoever kills that rascal Goliath. David said, what's all this stewing about? Goliath's just a man. Eh, cut him and he'll bleed like anybody else. Why doesn't somebody take up this challenge and clobber the big loud mouth? David's brother was really mad at him for this and bawled him out and told him to go home to his sheep and leave fighting to the real men. But somebody who had heard David told Saul and Saul sent for David. David said to Saul, quit worrying about the giant. I'll kill him. Now, mind you, Betty, here's this big Goliath. And here's this little guy as a shepherd. Saul replied, "Who? Oh, listen to the boy. There now, David, don't go off half cocked. You're no more than a child. And Goliath's been a soldier since he was in diapers. You wouldn't stand a chance. David said, oh, is that so? Well, listen, your highness. Once when I was keeping a sheep, a lion came and caught one of the sheep, and I chased the lion, and I killed it. And another time, I did the same with a bear. If I can kill a lion and a bear, I can kill this puffed-up Goliath. Besides, I've got a hunch God will deliver him into my power, like he did the lion and the bear. If God fights with me, the odds are all on my side. So what do you think so far, Betty? Does it look like Goliath is going to be the winner? Do you think it's sounding like David might be the winner? What do you think? Nine foot two and a little shepherd boy. What are you thinking? 
Yeah, David's a little shepherd boy. I didn't see the other guy. Yeah, it's kind of looking like that to me, too. And at this point, if anybody wants to put their bets down, we'll give you two more minutes. So Saul said, I believe you can do it. He put his own armor on David. But David felt awkward wearing that heavy armor, so he took it off. He went out to meet Goliath wearing nothing but his shepherd's cloak. However, he had his slingshot. And he picked up five smooth stones from the brook he crossed and marched out toward Goliath as brave as you please. Goliath saw him coming and he roared with laughter. Go back, little boy, he said. Unless you want to be food for my dogs by sundown. He's thinking David would be some dog food, right? Well, David replied, You come to me armed with spears and swords, but I come armed with the power of the living God. Goliath drew back his spear arm to throw his spear at David, but David was quicker. He put one of the stones in a sling, and he whirled it around and around his head a couple of times and picked up speed, and he let her fly. The stone went whistling through the air like a bullet, hit Goliath right in the temple, and Goliath fell over dead. And all the Jews shouted out for victory. And when Goliath hit the ground, it sounded like a building falling down in a cyclone. When all the Philistines saw that Goliath was dead, they turned and ran like rabbits. The Jewish army chased them back into the cities, and when they returned, it took all the booty from the Philistine camp. Meanwhile, you ready for this one, Betty? Hold on. In fact, hold on to your head. Hold on to your head. Okay. Meanwhile, David cut off Goliath's head. And he brought it to King Saul for a souvenir. Oh, and that was the end of that. Well, what happened? There was that head. How would he hold it up? Do you think he was holding the top of his hair? So if he was nine feet tall, I'm sort of thinking that must have been a pretty big head too, don't you think? Like this. Yeah, maybe like that. But I've got some interesting news for you. Yeah, that's possible. But here you go. I've got to talk with you about this. This is the end of this book. But you know what? That was the last part? That was it. It ends with David killing the lions. But guess what? That's the end of this book. But we've got a new book coming. And I hope everybody listening... To this broadcast today and watching us is looking forward to next week because we're going to start the new book next week with chapter 26 but it's going to be one for the book two and i'm excited about this because we've been working on it all week and betty this week you and i are going to have some private conversations so that we can surprise everybody next week because they have no idea what's going to happen next week. But I'm going to let you in on a secret. We won't tell anybody. And the only people who are going to know about it are you, Nana, and me. And you know what? I might not even tell your mommy. Unless she talks to me really nicely, which she always does. So, is Betty, is that, is that your mom? Okay. So, Betty, what do you think? Has this been fun? We've done 25 chapters together, you and I. And do you think we're getting ready for the next one? Yep. That's a lot of, that's a lot of Saturdays. That's a lot of Saturdays for sure it's been. And we've been having fun with all our people. Do you have any friends who ever say to you, Betty, I watch you on Saturdays. Does anybody ever tell you that they watch you? Do you have any friends? No? No friends of yours ever watch? I do have friends. I think I remember one of your friends was on with you maybe two times. And I think she's watching today. So here's what I'd like you to do, because we don't know. Yeah, say hi to everybody. So Betty, let's say goodbye to everybody who is watching today. And let's ask them all to come back next week. 
and then you and I together next week, we're going to tell them a big surprise about the second book, okay? So everybody, thank you for working with book one. Hope you're going to enjoy book two. And hold this thought. Once Goliath was dead, and once everybody saw what kind of a guy David was, what do you think happened to him? And remember this. What was his hometown, Betty? Begins with a B? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. See you in Bethlehem next week, everybody. And God bless you. Bye.